Hi folks. For those of you who are new to my channel, this video is a follow-up to my latest experiments in soil moisture monitoring, which can be found in this playlist. If needed, I'd recommend watching this video for those wanting background and context on this latest batch of experiments, and I'll include links in the description of this video. I'll start out by thanking those of you who correctly noted that this radiation shield for my BME 280 isn't really appropriate for monitoring air temperature. Although there's an air gap between my sensor and this PVC cap, the data I've been collecting suggests the sensor is likely picking up heat from the housing during peak sunlight hours. This confuses any results I might get from my soil monitoring experiments and is something that needs to be remedied. Here's an example of an appropriately designed radiation shield included in a Davis Instruments weather station. So in this video, I'll discuss the build and integration of a second temperature sensor specifically a BMP-280 housed in a Davis radiation shield for better approximating local air temperature in future experiments. Before I go on, I'll acknowledge the elevation of the sensor will read higher than ambient air temperature, which should be measured at a much higher elevation and away from retaining walls. But that bias is actually of interest to me as it relates to conditions where people, wildlife, and plants live. So I just want to establish that as a known factor in my monitoring. Now, if you're like me and you just want to see the results, I'll summarize those briefly next and then get into details of the build and experiment. So to summarize, the difference in temperature reported by the BMP-280 housed in this appropriate radiation shield relative to my original BME-280 housed with an air gap under this PVC cap is most significant when the sun is directly overhead, approaching close to 5 degrees Celsius cooler or eight and a half degrees Fahrenheit cooler at three o'clock in the afternoon. This demonstrates that properly designed radiation shields can mitigate bias in air temperature readings midday, but are less important in the morning, late afternoon, or evening hours. Moving forward, I'll keep both sensors installed and mapped to my data logger so I can get a more complete understanding of bias over the course of the day and how that bias changes over a 24 hour period and through the seasons. So, for this latest experiment, my improved radiation shield comes from a disassembled Davis weather station, one that I've been taking apart to better understand how these instruments are designed. And here's the radiation shield removed from the station, and upon removing the layer cake shielding, this is what I discovered. A temperature humidity sensor encapsulated in some housing with what appears to be a fiberglass lining. The sensor is mounted on insulation with an air gap to buffer readings from any heating of the shield itself. The sensor is mounted with screws threaded through these two holes, but as far as the included sensor goes, I don't have any details on the make, model, or any libraries to help me program it, so I'm going to have to find an alternative that I can easily embed in my existing installation for use with my existing data logging sketch. I happen to have a few of these BMP280 sensors on hand. These are different from the BME-280 installed under the other shield in that it only measures temperature and pressure, whereas the BME-280 also captures humidity. But that's okay since temperature is the parameter I'm most interested in, and I have other sensors to monitor humidity nearby. Both the BME and BMP-280 are manufactured by Bosch, and both have an identical accuracy of plus or minus one degree Celsius for the ambient temperature ranges I'm dealing with. Lucky for me, the BMP-280 fits perfectly inside, inside the housing that came with the Davis shielding. I then designed and 3D printed a new base to anchor the sensor to the shield, for which I'll include a link for the STL file in the description of this video. And here's the mounted sensor replacement for the layer cake shield assembly, now with my own sensor that I can program and log data with in the field. I maintain an air gap between the sensor and the insulation per the original design, and then use the Adafruit BMP280 library with a properly mapped I2C address in code. I'll talk about this step in another video since this did take a little bit of trial and error, especially when combining my installed BME280 with the new BMP280 on the same I2C bus using Adafruit's libraries. I can see from the threads that are online that a lot of people are having trouble with this. So I went through and did a whole bunch of combinations, did the I2C mapping in code, 
figured out how to do this properly, but that really is a deep dive that uh, deserves its own chapter. So I'll share more details on that at a later date. I then found a strong tie at Lowe's that matches the anchor points on the shielding and using a few metal screws and washers, attach the strong tie to the shielding, resulting in this completed assembly and sensor ready for programming and deployment. Prior to attaching and programming the sensor to my existing setup, I ran some tests on the sensor to make sure it was working okay as a standalone piece of equipment. All right, so it's uh, Saturday, July 15th at 8.55 in the morning. And I just brought the sensor outside from indoors. So I'm gonna give it a few minutes to equilibrate with the, uh, with the ambient conditions. But right now you can see that the temperature is slowly rising on the sensor. It was indoors where I have the AC running. So we'll come back and then compare it to what the thermometer reads. Should just be under 40 degrees Celsius. Okay, July 15th, 9.35 a.m. And I went ahead and I put this PVC cap over those two temperature sensors. Uh, that are just above ground and at ground just to provide a little bit of shade and hopefully get a little bit more of a representative sample. And the reason I did this is I want to be measuring ground and air temperature, not the temperature of the casing that's holding the sensor. And with the sun beating down on that metal casing, uh, the results probably aren't really representative of what I'm after. So hopefully this will create a little bit of shade so that the sensors aren't being heated by the sun directly. We'll see if that makes a difference. All right, folks, it's been close to two hours. It's 1041 right now on July 15th. And um, the thermometer's reading about 43 degrees Celsius right now. And the little sensor inside that uh, radiation shield is reading 41.56 degrees Celsius. So those numbers seem reasonable to me. Um, the thermometer is being directly hit by sunlight, so that's probably biasing a little bit on that front. What do we got on the BME 280? BME 280 is reading 42.26. Okay, folks, it's July 15th, about eight o'clock at night. And you can see that uh, the sensor is reading about uh, 38 and a half degrees Celsius. It's actually been running, this whole setup's been running out here for about a half hour. I left the laptop out here since the sun is down. So let's compare that to what's on the uh, display over here, which reads, probably can't see that through the plastic, but I can read it, which reads 38.57. So that's what's coming off that little sensor right there. And currently there's no sun out, so there's no influence from solar radiation. And let's see, the thermometer is reading. The thermometer is going to be tricky, but it's reading just under 40 degrees Celsius. So at night, everything's pretty much the same, which I would expect because there's no incident solar radiation that's heating up sensors and biasing results. So this works well if it's in the shade. That should work well regardless. And then that should also be somewhat shielded, I'm assuming. All right, folks, it's July 20th at 3 p.m. And uh, I just wanted to see what this looked like when the day's a little hotter and the sun's a little higher overhead. You can see that the temperature's reading 45.32 on the BMP 280 right there. Let's see what's inside the box for the BME 280. And I'm reading on that. I can't see because I've got this sticker in the way. 50.07. Wow. And uh, let's see what the thermometer says. Yeah, the thermometer is reading about 48 degrees. So as the day progresses, this thing is getting hotter and it's transferring heat to that little BME 280 and introducing some bias. 
Summarizing those three experiments, I realize the greatest difference between both sensors when the sun is directly overhead approaches close to five degrees Celsius or eight and a half degrees Fahrenheit. Again, this confirms the comments shared by many of you in my prior video that properly designed radiation shields should help mitigate bias in temperature readings due to heating of the housing, which ends up transferring heat to the sensor. This is especially true when the sun is high on the horizon, but less important in the morning or late afternoons, or for sensors placed in the shade. As a result, this was an important step to take prior to formal data collection and analysis for future experiments, at least as it relates to temperature. So with this interim step addressed, I feel more confident about the quality of the data collection moving forward. I won't go too far into more data analysis at this time, but before I close, I will share this one slide associated with my three buried capacitive soil moisture sensors discussed in prior videos. Although I don't have much confidence in these sensors for triggering irrigation as soils dry out, they do appear to be quite effective at detecting rainfall infiltration at various depths, as demonstrated by this graph generated by three sensors buried at three, nine, and 15 inches of depth and within ranges determined by wet dry sensor tests. I'll share more details on that in a future video and explore alternative applications for these sensors given their recognized limitations. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for updates and I'll catch you next time.